Hey everybody, this is Rykard here again, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Showdown Battle video. In today's video, I'm going to be using a different team, though still making use of Alolan Ninetales, as I've been having a lot of fun with this Pokemon, even on non-Hail teams, which is one, or which is basically what this team is. Um, I found that with the Hail team that I was using, while I will still use that team, it needs to be workshopped a bit because it did have a severe weakness to powerful steel types, of which there are a lot of in the current metagame. So this team is designed to kind of handle those a little bit better, running kind of a balanced offense team with Mega Sableye, Jirachi, and Rotom being my trio of walls, and then another trio in the form of Doug Trio, which is actually Scarfed, um, obviously not wanting to run Focus Sash because I have Hail on this team, um, allowing it to be a very, very effective revenge killer, and it's also packing Memento and Pursuit which work really well in allowing this Pokemon to either support my team further, which could also be used in combination with Aurora Veil support, as well as also trap things with Pursuit that would normally be easily able to switch out, such as Alolan Marowak, as well as any Pokemon that is levitating or flying that might fear the Stone Edge, because obviously this Pokemon packs that as well. And the last Pokemon I'm making use of is going to be just Dragonet Salamence, which works really well in combination with Aurora Veil support. I found on my previous team that Gyarados really did not have the speed to work really well after plus one, and Salamence kind of fits this job a little bit better. As for my opponent though, they are running kind of a similar team in the sense that it's kind of a trio of defensive Pokemon with a trio of offensive Pokemon. Um, so it's balance versus balance, and I find this battle to be very fun due to us having kind of similar match teams. So we're going to start this off, and I'm going to lead off with my Sableye as my opponent leads off a Tapu Fini, most likely predicting this because a lot of people like to Mega Evolve first turn, which is something that I did want to do. But unfortunately, fearing the Moonblast, I'm going to go ahead and switch out into Jirachi, as my opponent actually switches out into Salamence first turn, predicting something like that. Now me being afraid of the Fire Blast or the Earthquake, I'm going to go ahead and switch back out into Sableye, but I'm going to pause the video real quick right here to kind of go over my thought process and what basically just happened. So my opponent set up the second turn of the game, which initially is really threatening because if he's able to just get some Moxie boosts, which he is because I didn't see Intimidate, this could just be the end of the game right here. So there's two thoughts that are going through my head. The first is, this is most likely a Lumberry Salamence. So staying in with Prankster and not Mega Evolving just to go for the Will-O-Wisp to burn it doesn't seem like a good idea if it has Lumberry. So what I end up doing is predict that this Pokemon has Lumberry and instead of staying in going with Prankster Will-O-Wisp, I'm going to go ahead and Mega Evolve and make use of Foul Play thinking that this could actually do a lot of damage to my opponent. But what I'm about to find out is that my opponent is actually the... Um, Flyanium Z variant of Salamence, which mine actually is as well. So what would have been smart to go for the Will-O-Wisp turns out to be a bad play here because I'm just going to lose Mega Sableye outright. But anyways, I'm going to go on a Rotom here knowing that I could probably take a hit even at plus two because it's a bulky Pokemon and burn it this way, possibly sacrificing it later down the road if I have to. Um, but unfortunately, my opponent just goes for Fly, which I thought was interesting because I thought he would probably go for a Dragon move there. But this allows me to easily stay in with Rotom, resist the Fly, and burn my opponent, which is super good for me. Because now this is going to allow me an opportunity to live the next hit guaranteed and go for a Volt Switch, which is going to allow me to get a little bit more damage on this Pokemon. He decides, though, to go for the Dragon Dance here which is going to mean that he's going to just try to make use of as much of the boost that he's acquired as possible until he goes down. So I'm going to go ahead and go out into my Ninetales here to set up the Hail, basically making it so that he's going to be taking increased damage at the end of every turn through Hail and Burn. And now knowing he can't go for a Dragon move, he's going to have to go for Fly or a Dragon Dance again, or whatever his third move is, easily can go out into Rotom. It turns out that he has the Fire Fang, um, which is a very interesting option, I think, for a set like this one. Um, but knowing that, again, I can live pretty much anything here at this point because he is burned, even though he has quite a lot of stat boost, I'm just going to go ahead, get some more residual damage on it, and go for the Volt Switch as he goes for Dragon Dance again, meaning that this Pokemon probably doesn't have a Dragon move, which I thought was really odd, or just predicted me to go back into Ninetales predicting the Dragon move. But instead, Volt Switch just works out in my favor, um, and he's going to be taken down by the Hail and the Burn damage, which is fantastic for me. So now my opponent's going to go into Jirachi, and me obviously fearing the Steel-type move, I'm going to go ahead and switch out into my own Jirachi, which is going to be great, um, obviously giving me a resist, but he's going to go ahead and go for the U-turn, and this to me almost always means that this Pokemon is Scarf Jirachi. I don't know why, but I just assumed it at this point, and I'm going to basically be um, 
realizing that that is the case later in the battle. But as he brings in Hoopa, um, I just go ahead and go for a U-turn here. Now, I have no idea if I would have outsped, um, because I have no idea what spreads Hoopas like to use. Obviously, I don't have a lot of speed on my um, Jirachi. But either way, if he went for the Hyperspace Fury, I could have just went and brought in Dugtrio and Revenge killed it anyways. But um, he decides to go into Landorus, as you saw there, and I U-turn out into my Alolan Ninetales, which then forces him out. I try to predict a switch going back into my own Jirachi as he brings in Tapu Fini, and then set up Stealth Rock as he brings in his Jirachi, predicting me to go for yet another Steel-type move, which is basically now where we're caught up here. So uh, there we go with those last couple turns in just a little bit of time. So he's going to bring in Landorus back in again here after I set up my rocks. going to take a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage, but it's not going to matter too much because I'm going to easily be able to bring in Ninetales again and then threaten him out with the Freeze Dry. However, this time, because he's been switching around a lot, I'm thinking, you know, it would be the most useful thing to do right now is to set up my Aurora Veil. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to support my team's defenses and then go into my Rotom here to take the predicted Iron Head four times resist it and also have the Aurora Veil there. So that would have done nothing, but he decides to just go for U-Turn, goes out into Hoopy here, and then I'm pretty much just going to stay in here to get KO'd by Hoopa. Goes to the Hyperspace Fury, going to do a lot of damage because that move is just ridiculously powerful, but this is going to give me a free opportunity to now bring in Dugtrio, which is going to allow me to just trap it and go for the Earthquake. With the reduced defense, this is definitely going to KO and it's going to be super good for my team to take out this really powerful offensive threat. So now my opponent's going to bring in Landorus, which pretty much always happens whenever I bring in Dugtrio because Landorus is on every other team. And I'm going to freely go out into Ninetales here, now knowing that even if you wanted to predict this and go for Stone Edge, I would still be able to live it because the Aurora Veil is up. And then just go for the Freeze Dry on the following turn. My opponent has been switching around a lot, and I felt like that was the turn he was going to stay in, so I didn't want to predict a switch. Went for the Freeze Dry, it worked out really well in my favor, and I take out the Landorus as then he brings in Jirachi, and now me thinking, okay, this might be the turn he decides to go for Iron Head. As far as I'm concerned right now, this Jirachi only has one move, which is U-Turn. So go out into Jirachi. Unfortunately, again, he goes for U-Turn, then brings in Mega Venusaur, which you'll see is Mega in a second. But I just go for the Iron Head because Jirachi versus Venusaur is actually a favorable matchup for Jirachi, at least in my experience, because of Iron Head flinches. But he's going to go back into his own Jirachi and then KO me with Fire Punch, which I thought was really risky because, as you're going to see right now, I can just bring in Doug Trio again and trap this Jirachi, even if he was Scarfed. I am faster as a Scarfed Doug Trio, so we can easily trap it and take it out with another Earthquake. Now at this point he brings in Tapu Fini, and I'm thinking, well, I don't really have a use for this Doug Trio, so I might as well just try and do as much damage as possible. He might have predicted me to switch into Salamence there and went for the Moonblast. I was actually surprised that I even lived that, to be completely honest, but it's going to allow me to actually get a huge chunk of damage off on this Tapu Fini, bringing it into a very, very low range of health, which is going to freely allow me to now go into my Alolan Ninetales and KO it with the Freeze Dry, which I think is possibly one of the best things about this new Pokemon is that it gets this. But now he's going to go into Venusaur here, and just for safety reasons, I'm going to go ahead, set up the Aurora Veil, and this is going to allow me to live a Sludge Bomb, which is really interesting information to know for later if I'm ever up against a defensive Mega Venusaur. But I'm just going to do a little bit of damage with Freeze Dry here as my opponent decides to go for Synthesis. Um, Hail obviously making it so that Synthesis recovers a lot less HP. But I also, interestingly enough, pack the Encore on this Ninetales. So I'm going to be able to actually Encore my opponent onto Synthesis. And at this point, I can win the battle two ways. I can either just keep encoring him into Synthesis till he just dies to struggle eventually, or I could do it the cool way, go out into my Salamence, and then go for my Supersonic Sky Strike and just one-shot this Venusaur at full health, which was just such a satisfying thing and a really awesome way to end this battle. But anyways, everybody, this is a team I think that fares a lot better in the current meta than the previous one, even though I really did enjoy just running a fully hail-based team. This one has definitely netted me a lot more wins, though, since that previous battle. But anyways, everybody, as always, I hope you all enjoyed watching, and take care, goodbye, and I will see you all next time.